Hello to my dear children of MA previous and uh, uh, I am continuing with my lectures of Francis Bacon and this is my fifth lecture of his essay of friendship. In this essay, in my last lecture, I had uh, or and in other uh, and, and in a lecture before that also, I had basically talked of all these examples. The first example that he had given was that of El Silla and then he continues and uh, he gives us this second example of Julius Caesar. Uh, later on, uh, we had also discussed the example of Augustus, Tiberius Caesar. This was the fourth example. And then we had moved on with the example of uh, Septimius Severus, which was the fifth example. These all were uh, important examples of how monarchs and kings had formed friendships, friendships that had ultimately, you know, uh, led to their um, either a bitter ending or even murder because the friends had turned hostile. So even though the first fruit of friendship was that uh, if you remember before giving us the examples he had told us that the principle the first fruit of friendship was how it gives the heart and emotional support having a friend was really cathartic to a person's heart because he could pour out all his emotions to a friend but in case of uh, kings and monarchs uh, this was really uh, ambiguous ambiguous means something which has two sides positive and negative uh, positive because a king really needed somebody who, with whom he could um, uh, talk or discuss uh, or share his cares like an equal but the adverse effect was that the king was usually backstabbed uh, he was usually um, given a rough edge by that so-called person who was the friend and this is the very same thing that now uh, we are going to discuss in this next paragraph when he says now if these princes had been a trajan or a marcus uh, these are very simply he uses examples uh, where he says Trajan and uh, Marcus Aurelius, he gives examples of noble princes, um, of good nature and very uh, sensitive state of mind. So he says, if if uh, good natured and sensitive princes uh, could have done this but he says all the above examples are men of wisdom they are not just some emotional or impulsive rulers they are men of wisdom men so wise of such strength and severity of mind they were very intelligent so julius caesar was no fool do you understand this when he says when he has given us so many examples all of these were very strong rulers augustus uh, he has given us an example of very strong Scylla, uh, a, a great warrior ruler so they have had strength and severity of mind and so extreme lovers of themselves as all these were it proveth most plainly that they found their own felicity though as great as ever happened to mortal men but as an half piece now he is a, using a metaphor over here uh, let me write a bit so that we can actually uh, let's make them some space over here and write so that you can understand the meaning of what he is trying to say over here um, these lines i am writing a little and then we will discuss this He says the above mentioned kings, all the kings who are mentioned above,
so he says that even though they were not emotional they were wise they fell for a yearning of dear friendship this was a kind of a what is yearning yearning is like a deep urge a deep wish that i really wish i had a friend they had everything and yet they yearned for dear friendship that ultimately brought on their uh, downfall and i also uh, wish to refer to this one word which he has used that you know even though they had everything everything uh, that a person would need wives sons nephews which means a whole family so they had everybody then why this deep yearning for a uh, a friend which even a family could not complete so this is really interesting you know how friends and family are different uh, he says even though you have the love of your family you still wish for a true and complete friendship and he uses this term half piece half piece here he means to say incomplete the meaning of this term is incomplete so the the whole this whole um, the rest of the paragraph he means to say that so here half pence means incomplete that the king actually felt that without the comfort of friendship it was as if you know his life was like a half pence it was incomplete and then he says it is not to be forgotten that comenius ob observeth of his first master now uh, uh, let me write who this person is whom he is talking about uh, comenius comenius was okay uh, comenius was a, a diplomat and uh, an author so he was a person who had served under duke charles the hardy this was the first uh, royal whom he had served and the second person whom he had served was louis the 11th of france and he says for th these two masters under whom he had served comenius observed that both of them had one trait one common character uh, and what was this common character that he would communicate his secrets with none they would not bring any one so close to themselves as to share their secrets with them and least of all those secrets which troubled him most so the very dark secrets that they had they did not share those secrets with anyone this was their nature the nature of both duke charles the hardy so in this way throughout their rule throughout their life both du the duke and louis the 11th of france both of them did not let anyone come close to them otherwise they would have uh, you know uh, got the same treatment as the monarchs which have the examples of monarchs which we have done before and so uh, he wishes to say that these were the secrets which troubled him most whereupon he goeth on and saith that towards his latter time latter time here he means to say old age but when both of them were old what happens 
this closeness here closeness does not mean nearness here the word closeness is different here the word closeness means secretive this secretive nature that they had it turned out to be an an impairment what does an impairment means it turned out to be an a hurdle for uh, them because in their old age they had nobody who was close to them uh, they had always kept themselves so close you know so secretive that in the old age they both suffered from uh, you know uh, their understanding perished here you can uh, take this as depression that you know because of loneliness because of no friends because of nobody with whom they could uh, share the feelings of their heart so they suffered both of them suffered from a kind of isolation and depression you can also write the word isolation over here surely comenius might might have made the same judgment also if he had pleased him of his second master louis the 11th whose closeness was indeed his tormentor so he says he has written this about duke charles the hardy and the same thing thing could have been written about uh, louis the 11th both of them duke charles the hardy and louis the 11th of france they had the same nature and uh, comenius observes that towards the end of their life this nature of being secretive of not having any friend any confidant somebody to share their feelings with it turned to be their tormentor uh, because without true friends uh, having this kind of a very suspicious nature don't trust anyone ultimately has very negative effects because then you are left all alone and you suffer from depression uh i think this is enough for today's lecture and in my next next lecture uh, we will finish this uh, this uh, because we have to do the second fruit of uh, friendship which comes over here the second fruit of friendship we are going to begin that uh, so uh, let me see you in my next lecture i hope you have understood till here thank you very much.